Welcome back to episode 12 of Juice Cast, a podcast made for resellers by resellers. Today I'm joined by Saucy. And uh, how's it going, bro? I'm doing really well, man. I'm super excited for today's episode. And uh, as we mentioned last time on episode 11, uh, we have a special guest today. Um, so without further ado, I am really, really happy uh, and thankful to have Michael from Notify with us today. How's it going, Michael? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm doing well. Looking forward to speaking with you guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, we had said in the beginning of the podcast that we're going to bring on great guests onto the show. And uh, obviously, we've had Ben. Um, we've had... Jalen from Osiris Rafflebots, and I think, you know, we, we're just going to continue to bring out great guests, and, you know, Michael is part three of that series. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, so uh, just to sort of get us started today, um, for everyone who's listening right now, uh, what we'd like from you, Michael, is just tell us a little about your journey and how you've built such a great reputation, business model, everything, all that uh, within our industry today. So very briefly, um, I started reselling maybe about five years ago. I wasn't really aware of box. I was reselling in London at the time, just going to like, you know, install um, releases and stuff. I found out about bots about 2017, got really into botting 2018. Um, I wasn't really satisfied with the co-groups that I was a part of at the time. So I decided to make my own. Um, and we've always had a very customer driven business. So I think that's one of the main things that's allowed us to become so successful in this niche industry. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, you mentioned reselling. Were you always reselling like the specific goods that, that we focus on, like sneakers and, and apparel and stuff like that? Or did you also start off with other commodities too? Yeah, so I just started off with um, sneakers and Supreme, really. I'd say Supreme is one of like the main things that really interested me at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think the biggest thing that we all learn as entrepreneurs is like the best way to come up with a really successful idea is to find something that you're lacking in your life, right? You know, and, and you mentioned in your earlier days, you, you can find proper cook groups that offer the services that you were looking for. And that's how it translated into you offering the services. Um, so when you say that, you know, they weren't up to par or, you know, they didn't give you what you were looking for, what, what were those things in particular, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, for sure. So I don't really mean it in a derogatory manner. It's more that the cook groups that I had found at the beginning, and I tried quite a few out when I was still starting off plotting, um, maybe about six different cook groups. And I found that most of them catered towards the advanced reseller, the person who already knows what they're doing. But there's always that level of assumed knowledge. Whereas when I made Notify, I wanted to support people across the entire reselling journey, which means providing the information that could theoretically take someone from zero knowledge to being, you know, the type of reseller where they are moving hundreds of pairs or at least uh, they have their own business set up and everything right from that beginner stage whereas the other cook groups as i said seem to be more focusing on people who were already nearing that advanced level okay so kind of just you know um pr providing like knowledge you're not going to find anywhere else type of thing as well yeah so kind of like going in with the assumption that members do not have any base knowledge so that we are supporting people like at every stage of the journey you know so stuff as simple as what is a proxy all the way to like more advanced guides and like properly using subnets um things kind of like that you know okay so like building them from ground zero no matter where they're that, that i think that's you know really clever and uh you know i think a lot of groups don't do that um but kind of to shift gears here um you've built a pretty significant social media presence what was the hardest part of creating a name in the community? Um, so I think the hardest part is kind of like when you're starting, you kind of want to interact with a lot of people. But when you kind of a known name, um, as I was, uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, obviously everyone's got to start somewhere. Uh, when you're trying to interact with a lot of people, I find that people can easily find you annoying. You know, there's like a very fine balance between trying to get your name out there and being seen as just like another annoying person. Um, 
So, and I, I did think I was quite annoying. I mean, a lot of people told me that I was quite polarizing. Like when I first started off, you know, there's a lot of people who didn't like me, but there was also uh, quite a few people who did like me. Um, so yeah, the hardest part is just trying to find that balance between trying to gain a name within the community versus not being seen as like an annoying uh, try hard, so to speak. That makes sense. Yeah, it's um, there, like you said, like there's a fine line between um, being annoying and, uh, you know, trying to get your name out there. What would you recommend? Like, what is, what is your advice to someone who's trying to get their name out there right now in the sneaker industry? Um, just be kind to everyone and try not to ask for favors, but rather try and offer them to people where you can. Um, I can't really think of any like examples off the top of my head, but it's kind of just how we network and any other community or industry, you know, try and establish mutually beneficial connections with people. So that it's not just one side it's like, it can't just be you constantly asking for things. You've got to be offering stuff in the first place that then makes that person want to kind of help you out and you keep building those connections and that, those people are going to introduce you to their friends and connections. And then that's how you end up with a large network. So really, really pushing out your services, right? So uh, I guess this brings me to like, how many services do you actually provide for industry? And like, where, where did you, where did you first start? Which service did you primarily start with? And then how did you grow to the other branches of, of Notify? Um, so the actual first thing that I started before like any notify stuff was I started a proxy company with one of, one of my friends called Box, who is a developer at Botmart. Um, and the proxy company did okay. We just sold within the cyber, sold Discord. Um, but then I decided to shut down because the time wasn't really worth the money and we didn't have the expertise to scale. Um, and then notify came a few months after that, the cook group. And at the time, the good group was for both US and EU people. Um, and then I met the judge, who is the owner of Notify Proxies, and we decided to launch Notify Proxies together. At the time, he was actually developing for a different proxy company. But he like pitched this idea to me to make a proxy company under the Notify brand, since the brand was starting to gain some traction. And then we decided to split the server into US and EU in about early 2019, I think, or was it? Sorry, not a bit less than that, about late 2019. Um, and we also have like some licensed brands, for example, Notified Gmails and a few other small services, but the main ones is, the main ones are Notified EU, US and proxies. Okay, so you mentioned like opening up Notified EU. Um, that's really interesting because sort of, you know, some groups try to mix everything all into one. Um, what are the advantages of separating the groups based on region? Like, you know, sometimes we find that, uh, the, people try to get, I guess, the best bang for your buck and try to shove everything in one group. And maybe that'll hinder the possibility of pushing out the best information specifically for one group. How, how do we, how did you go about that? Yeah. So initially we thought it was fine because um kind of like we thought people every type of person would want the same features like we went in with that assumption right mm -hmm. uh, everyone's going to want the same type of info and guides but as time went on we kind of realized that like us and eu reselling is just completely different it's like barely comparable in my opinion um they have very different needs i feel eu is a lot more monitor focused whereas mm -hmm. US is a lot more information focused. Yeah. Um, so to like better serve each customer's needs uh, and have the staff in place in both servers, being able to just focus on either specific US stuff or Canadian stuff or European stuff, we just found it was better to have completely distinct servers. Okay. Yeah. So, and the one thing I wanted to add on to that was. Um, what we mostly tend to find in our industry is a lot of services that are specifically very niche are always out of stock, right? Um, and the thing is, most users, you know, we find that whether maybe bots, cook groups, even proxies now, um, and there's like invite only proxies, right? And so um, 
users need to access these things via restock or, or group buys or whatever it may be. Why do you like from your experience, why is it that owners try to keep their services or groups unavailable to the general public? And what are the sort of the benefits of that uh, and disadvantages as well? Yeah, sure. So from an outside perspective, a lot of people seem to think that the reason all these products are kept out of stock purposefully is just hung. It's called hunger marketing. It's where you make people want something because they can't have they it. They don't have it. <laughs> yeah. And that is like obviously going to play a certain role, but the main thing is kind of just if Notify was always in stock, for example, or we just let anyone join, um, we feel the service quality would degrade a lot. And while things like information is still, you know, like it doesn't matter how many members there are if we're pushing out information because it's the same quality. Whereas the stuff like, for example, we do one-on-one support where members can voice call with a staff member um, and just ask any questions or get a set, set of advice uh, to manage the capacity of that for like um, hundreds or thousands of people, like hundreds of thousands mm-hmm. more people uh, would just be very hard to maintain and that would degrade the quality. And we feel it'd just be kind of like a complete, I mean, I have nothing against groups that do go the other way, but I just think for our, um, for our focus, it's quite hard to scale because we try and make sure um, every staff member has the level of knowledge that we desire um, to link him back to what I said earlier to fully support people at every stage of their reselling career. Mm-hmm. So that, that's, that's really interesting because that really speaks levels to sort of, I guess, your customer experience, right? I think sometimes we find that services will look to just sort of get as many users as they can in order to get a good flow of income and obviously maybe better the services they have, but maybe that finding that healthy balance is what you really need, right? Um, so I guess what I also wanted to ask was um, how far do you plan on taking these services that you provide? Like, do you have any more plans to expand? I know that you've done already a significant amount of of several different uh, branches under your umbrella now, but is there any is there any other future plans for Michael and for Notify? Um, so right now I'm just trying to, before I launch anything else, I'm trying to maximize the quality of US and EU. Um, so recently, especially in the past two months, I've been calling a lot of our members, you know, uh, maybe in groups of four or five, like focus groups, and just been getting the advice and opinions on different aspects of Notify, what they want to see changed or uh, improved. And we've been acting on that feedback very quickly. So that's my main focus right now. But once we're more content with that um, side of things, we do want to launch a Chinese version of Notify. We've had um, a lot of Mandarin speakers request that because they do want to get uh, quality that us and our us and eu groups offer but um they may not speak english or be fluent in it or may they may just prefer mandarin in general um so that is something that we want to do hopefully by the end of this year that um so like as you're expanding how do you balance your you know what you do in your personal life outside of sneakers and you know what you do in the industry what's the um What's the secret sauce to, you know, balancing all that? Yeah. So outside of um, all of this business kind of stuff, uh, I am studying at university and I have an internship, a one-year internship starting in July. Um, so I need, to, I need to manage my time pretty well. Um, I think the main thing is kind of just finding people that I can really trust and who have the same alignment is me and that doesn't necessarily mean i want yes men i want people who actually do challenge me when um they think something isn't you know the right solution or whatever um and i think i've been quite lucky to have like a really great staff team so that if i'm if i don't have the time to handle something there's at least five ten twenty people that can 100 percent trust to do that task to the uh, level of quality that i'd expect so really it I think for people who like, I mean, I guess it's quite obvious really to like run a successful business, you need 
people that you can delegate to without sacrificing any quality. That makes sense. And um, like, how do you go about of finding these people? Is it through social media? Is it through people that you already know? Is it through mutual friends? Um, so I'd say about half of our staff team were actually once notify members. So we'll just kind of spot people who are always helping because we have a few channels where the focus is for members to help other members if they don't want to talk directly to staff because sometimes members don't want to like open a ticket if it's just you know like a 30 second question or something um so we kind of see who has like that level of knowledge that we want and that kindness that you know fosters that nice community environment and then we'll message them uh, see if they'd be interested in staff we'll try and point out a few areas that they could improve on will assign them some other staff to help them improve on the areas. For example, if someone's not that knowledgeable with proxies, then I might schedule some calls with the judge, the owner of notify proxies, for him to kind of teach, I guess even train that member on um, proxy knowledge before they become a full staff member. And then otherwise it's kind of just like referrals from current staff. Like for example, they'll know someone who is also very knowledgeable that wants to work for Notify, or it'll just be through the application form on our Twitter. Oh, okay. So um, one question I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of interested in is um, you started off how long ago? Two years ago, right? With Notify? Um, so that was August 2018. Okay. So that was, oh, so three years ago almost. We're almost at yeah. three years. Um, how would you say uh how, how how much time and effort would you say you put in in this three years like compared to possibly like you know uh uh executive job at you know a big company compared to that how much would you say you put in um that's a really interesting question so i haven't had any like real world experience and perhaps like for example, someone working at a large company is probably going to be dealing with maybe more complex challenges and stuff. So I won't deny that. Um, as for time, I'd say at the beginning, I was working like an unhealthy amount of hours, maybe like 12 hours because I had like a bad mindset at the beginning. I kind of thought that like I should do everything or else I might be losing quality. <laughs> That's before... I realized like there is a lot of people out there who have the same alignment as me who want Notify to be as great as I want it to be. Um, so yeah, over time, as I like developed that mindset, uh, I, I started spending like less time simply just because I didn't really need to. But I'd say the effort is actually higher now, even with the less time, because the problems that we're trying to solve now are just more complex, you know, like. When I was spending those 12 hours a day, a lot of it was kind of just like menial tasks. Um, stuff that didn't involve like solving like hard challenges, very like reactive. But now most of what I'm doing is kind of proactive, like having plans for the next one year, two years. And also the competition, like trying to stay ahead of competition because when we st first started the group, like competition is very scarce, you know, but now there is, like a lot of good cook groups, a lot of great cook groups that we have to try and constantly stay on top of. Okay, yeah. So uh, I actually wanted to rewind a little and steer back. Uh, you mentioned that you know you will be sort of pursuing a new internship, uh, maybe in the next couple of months or so, something like that. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, uh, uh, maybe you know we can get our listeners to get a little more insight into sort of who Michael is. What sort of internship is that, or what do you plan on doing? Yeah, so the internship is called business. I mean, the role is called business development. Okay. Um, oh. And the company is, uh, it's a Fortune 500 technology company. You, you'll be working as sort of like a business development associate, right? And, and I guess like learning through that process for the next couple of months with that company? 
Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Actually. I'm, I'm doing something similar to that right now, um, in the summertime. Uh, and, and it's been, I mean, I just started about a week ago and it's been a great experience so far. So, you know, good luck on that. I think I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're really looking to take that and hopefully bring back some valuable information into your own companies as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The main thing is just that I just want to learn as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take as many tasks as I can, you know, I ask for extra work where possible try mm -hmm. and see different areas of the company and see what I can kind of bring back to improve my own skills, um, my own skills that, that will help me improve not how I had at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And so you're a student as well? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Well, so earlier we talked about networking, right? Um, and sort of the importance of pushing out your services, as you'd say. Uh, so your groups have managed to secure some really big name partners. Tell us a little about that process of networking and getting other companies to listen. Yeah, so um, a lot of it just goes back to like one of the first points I made, which is kind of just being nice to people and always seeking to make mutually beneficial connections. But I think another thing is, um, I need to be careful how I phrase this, but like I find a lot of people in sneak Twitter who or just the sneaker community in general mm -hmm. or maybe even just the world in general uh, <laughs> when they believe that people don't have any value to bring them or they see them as lesser or whatever then I find that people are like quite rude or they'll just ignore people who they believe mm -hmm. aren't providing value whereas I try not to like ever ignore people um even if it's someone who's just like fresh in the community or they've been here for 10 years, I'll try and treat them with the same level of kindness. And I, I find that that has paid many dividends because, you know, like there'll be people who, um, okay, I've got an example. Are you familiar with live proxies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so live proxies, for people who don't know, uh, it's pretty good as a proxy company. Um, and when they first started, they reached out to notify for uh, a group buy. Okay. Well, we declined it because um, we try not to do group buys with proxy providers until they have an established reputation because you're not know, trying to protect our members. But and, like, I see some people, uh, they'll, they will reply something rude, like, you know, or, or maybe they just won't even reply because they see this at the mm -hmm. time, no name proxy provider. But we sent like a very polite message, you know, thanks for offering a group buy. We're not interested at the moment, but um once you guys have like became more established and stuff which we're sure that you will then we would be happy to look into this again and then maybe like five six months later live proxies really popped off um like they're always like sold they're, out they're doing really well right now i use them for my setups as well yeah yeah exactly and um we reached out for a group by and we were kind of like thinking oh they're gonna say no because we declined <laughs> them previously yeah but the guy was like yeah of course and one of my stuff was like thanks for the after the group i was like thanks for the group buy we were quite surprised you accepted it because we previously declined you and mm -hmm. uh the owner of live proxy has said that because we were so polite in our initial dealing he like completely understood our angle and we he knew that we were just trying to do what's best for our members just like wow. he tries to do what's best for his users so he'd be and since then we've had like We've got a pretty healthy, uh, pretty good relationship with live proxies. Um, and that, that's just one example. And I have like countless other examples like that with bots that were kind of up and coming. Um, they've wanted to give out some beta trials. For example, this actually happened with Wrath. Uh, Wrath back in maybe 2018 didn't have that good a reputation because of um, an incident, because the dev was. He was like 14 at the time. He made some mistakes, yeah, as any 14-year-old yeah. will. Um, and <laughs> Rath didn't have a great rep. But he knew that his bot was really good. But no groups would really... He wanted to give out some beta trials to groups. But no groups really wanted them because they didn't want to be associated with that risk. But we took that risk. We gave uh, about 300, 400 Rath beta keys to our members. And that was wow. the drop where Rath proved itself. It was the Obsidian's. Um, and since then, Rath, you know, Rath now resells for like 7k and yeah. I talk to the developer daily. And that's just from like being nice, taking a chance on someone who was not very popular at the time. 
you know, so I'm always just trying to make good relationships with everyone, regardless of oh. their current standing. That, that's really admirable because I find that, you know, uh, it, it is sometimes, as we like to say, toxic in our industry. But uh, I, think, I think being nice goes a long way. I'd say in my like, experience as well, just reaching out to people, whether it be to provide services or to maybe uh, get employed by, by you know, services just like yours. I think the hardest thing is not even receiving any sort of feedback, right? Mm-hmm. Not even receiving that sense of, okay, you know, we're not going to go with you today, but we appreciate you taking the time to fill out our application or we appreciate you taking the time to, to reach out to us, right? And I, I think that goes a long way, like you said, right? I, I think that live proxies example is, is really fascinating. Um, but yeah, I'll pass it on to DX, DTX. Got any questions? Yeah, uh, that was like, you know, one of the main questions I was going to ask you is how do you go about like building relationships with these new companies as well, right? I think you guys have a partnership with Torpedo. Is that correct? You know, back whenever um, in like December, Torpedo was like kind of an up and coming bot and like, you know, they didn't really have partnerships with a lot of groups except for you. How did you like go about building that relationship specifically or building relationships with like newer companies? Yeah, so that relationship was like, extremely lucky to be honest um so one of the developers slash owners of torpedo is called spazio um or big spaz and he applied to be a homework helper in our group because we do provide some services like that for the people who need extra academic help in high school or um beginner level college classes and I just quite, me and Spazio just spoke quite a bit just as like friends. And um, then he told me like about a month or two later that he was making a bot with his friends and he loved to give some trials out to notify. And it's kind of like the same thing with Raft, you know, like people are kind of hesitant about beta bots. And I do understand why there is a lot of like scams going around. But we took that chance, you know, and we realized like this bot is actually has a lot of potential and it did like end up reaching its potential um and yeah so we just got in early really it's kind of just taking risks and you know always being kind to people like how i was I mean spazio were good friends before i even knew he was like making a bot or anything that makes sense so um kind of like you know to shift gears again is uh, i had a question regarding like do you have any tips for others who might be looking to get into what you do and how would they, you know, start assuming they're at ground zero? Um, so you're talking about like trying to get partnerships. Yeah, trying to get partnerships, trying to get their name out there, trying to, you know, start a company, all, all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it all just comes back down to, the, I know I've said it a few times, but it all comes down to truly just being kind to people um and making those like connections and uh, just to address something i've been seeing a lot of tweets about lately with regards to connections people seem to think that like the only way to get connections is to already be already have a reputation in the community or have financial resources but like i really don't think that's true i think the only reason people think that is because they're trying to directly you know like coming into the community and immediately trying to network with like, um, you know, like the bot owners, the bot developers, uh, a bot dev probably gets like a thousand DMs a day. And then people get slightly offended when the bot dev doesn't reply. You know what I mean? Like you need to just try and network with people who are on a similar level to you initially, or maybe have just got a slightly uh, larger reputation and kind of just, you know, work your way up. You can't just start like trying to talk to, trying to, I, I don't I don't really know how to phrase this correctly. I'm not really trying to like offend anyone, but it's kind of just, I guess diversify who you're speaking to, you know, don't, don't only try and speak to people who you think you can get something from, just speak to other people in the community in general. No, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like, you know, have realistic expectations in a sense, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And like another question I had for you was, uh, what are some failures that you could share with our listeners that have been like a good learning curve for you and 
uh, how could you know the listeners avoid them if they were to encounter similar situations? Um, that's a good question, but it's a hard one. Um, yeah, so I'd say at the start of our European server, we just tried to like copy the success of the US server with only minor modifications. Um, and we had kind of like, a, I guess, arrogant would be a good word, uh, would be an honest word for it. It's kind of, we thought like, because this was successful in the US, it must be successful in Europe, as long as we change like something, a few things. Um, but the truth is that in general, in my opinion, EU users have just like completely different needs to US users. Um, so I, I guess if I were to like redo that, if I were to go back in time, I would have really considered um, user feedback right from the beginning um, and like not taken past success as an indicator of future success, if that makes sense. Like not had this viewpoint that just because we were successful with our US users, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be uh we're going to have the same level of success with our eu users um but we did adapt to that i'd say by just the thing i said earlier just speaking to the members a lot uh, getting feedback and acting on it wherever possible that makes sense well um i think that's really good advice and i think that's you know kind of a perfect place to put it into this interview slash episode um Saucy, any any other questions you may have? Or... Uh, no, I think today was really informative. Uh, you know, we really got to learn who Michael is, uh, what you do from a day to day basis, and sort of how you've uh, started from from nowhere and, and gone into where you are today, which is really amazing. Uh, so, you know, I think I'd just like to extend our gratitude uh, as co host of, of a Chief Guest uh, to say thank you for joining us today, Michael. Oh, thank you, guys. It was, it was really good talking to you guys. I was saying likewise, uh, it was, you know, really good having this conversation with you and kind of getting a different perspective um, from something, you know, I haven't really, you know, learned too much about. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, and you know what, uh, hopefully we can have you back on our episode for, uh, for uh, another time and, and maybe get to know a little bit more and, and get an update on where you are uh, later on. Yeah, I'll be talking for that. Huge shout out to Michael for coming on the podcast. His socials are linked in the description below as well as mine and Saucy's. Make sure if you have any questions for the next podcast to tweet them at us or leave them in the comments below as we'll answer them in the next episode. Um, yeah, that's all. Perfect. Until next time, guys. Peace.